So your pal Noah is looking a little disheveled, I know, after three or four days of essay writing and studying and presentations and stress and sadness, just all the stuff that comes with ending semester one at college. And yes, I did post on the community tab that college is kicking my ass, which explains a lack of content. And indeed it is, and it will continue to do so for the next couple of days, probably up until like the 15th or so. Um, But I was more free this afternoon than I thought, which is why we're here creating this video before I have to jump into a group FaceTime call to create a keynote for my logic class on a conspiracy theory specifically on how my group thinks that Paramount messed up Sonic to create more hype and make more money. That's a video that I'd love to do just for shits and giggles. If you want to see that, let me know. But this is not the reason why we're here. Today, we're here to test out Windows 10 on the MacBook Pro 16-inch here. I have it installed actually on an external drive that is a Samsung T5 SSD, and I'll probably release some kind of tutorial for 2020. But today, we're going to do some gaming tests. In the time that I've been studying, I've downloaded Battlefield 5, Battlefield 1, CSGO, Rainbow Six, a bunch of other games that we're going to test here. And I'm also going to test Windows 10 and just talk about the experience on a Mac with the bootcamp drivers and whatnot. And yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the algorithm likes it, and will help push my content to more people, the regular stuff that I always say here. And without wasting any more time, let's jump into this Windows and gaming test. So here we are on the Windows 10 desktop. It runs just the same way it would on any other Windows laptop very smoothly. We have all the graphics drivers installed and the trackpad and the keyboard. The touch bar works to a certain degree. You just have your function keys and whatnot. You have your function row if you press the function button. And then of course your brightness and media toggles and volume toggles. Um, but yeah, it, it's a pretty standard Windows laptop experience. Let's launch a game. Let's first up start with the good old Minecraft. Of course, it's going to run well on here, but how well, you may ask. Let's open it up here. You don't have to run this on Windows. I'm just going to do it anyway. So for some annoying reason, audio is not working right now. So unfortunately, we cannot hear the wonderful sounds of Minecraft and first-person shooters that we're going to be playing. So it's going to be kind of a silent movie for right now. Let's go into single player. Let's create a world. Let's go creative. I don't even care what it's called. We're just going to create a world and just navigate through it and see what kind of frames we're getting um so we're getting 38 37 fps what now we're getting 41 interesting let's let's take a look here i wonder why it's performing like this i really highly doubt it would perform like this in mac os but in windows for whatever reason minecraft is not working very well or java is at least let's um turn vsync off and see what happens 96, 93, 100, 102. So I think VSync was messing with it. Maybe the driver. So with VSync turned off, um, frame rate isn't an issue. We're up at 92 FPS, 95. Let's go back into the village where we had around 40, 95. Yeah, frame rate isn't a problem with VSync turned off. Obviously, it's a little bit more choppy, but for some reason, VSync maybe isn't quite optimized yet for the MacBook Pro 16 inch. That's very interesting here. Let's blow up. Um, one of these villagers houses everybody does this don't judge me this is just a good way to test the cpu and how it handles a lot of stuff happening at once here and let's uh fill up this wonderful house full of tnt and then oops oh oh, oh okay well that yeah we did it and the frame rate dropped down to five but we're back up in the 70s so i, I guess it's okay for that i mean obviously no computer is going to handle a big explosion in Minecraft lightly. It's not going to just brush it off or render every frame, but that did pretty good, and it just bounced back, I guess, in terms of, you know, frame rate. Let's check out this desert temple. We can even go in here. Yeah, I'm going to dig my way into here. Yep, and we're going we're gonna to see. Okay, we got diamond horse armor, enchanted book, silk touch, two diamonds, heck yeah. Uh, we got a golden apple, and then we got piercing one and iron horse armor let's do some more explosions here see how the frame rate goes up oh, and the frame rate dropped down to 60 fps so not horrible i guess it just depends what you blow up and where you blow things up um yeah so the frame rate in windows at least is okay um with these things turned off but yeah, so far, the Minecraft experience is what you would expect, at least once again with VSync turned off. The components in this machine are more than enough to handle this game. Next up, let's test out CSGO, and of course, this game can run on pretty much every device, even my Core i3 Surface Pro 7, but we'll see what kind of graphic settings you can enable on here and still have a smooth experience. So let's play. Very high, trilinear, wait for vertical. Okay, well, I'm already dead. 
um, 8x MSAA. So it looks like all of the details and all of the settings are really, really uh, high resolution. We're playing at 3072 by 1920, the full resolution. I don't even need an FPS counter to tell you that this experience is very smooth. Of course it would be this game can run on a freaking potato and that's no exception here. The hardware in this, this machine is of course more than good enough to run this game just like it was with Minecraft here. I'm not noticing any lag, any stutter at all, even at these high settings. Um, yeah, it's a really nice experience here if you have this laptop as a student or a creator and you happen to play this game. By the way, you can play it with Mac OS. No need to uh, do boot camp or install Windows on your Mac just to play this game. Um, you should expect a really nice experience. Maybe even a better experience as the Mac OS experience is obviously more optimized for this device. Next up, let's try out Rainbow Six Siege. The fans are already ramping up quite a bit here and it's launching. So we are now at full screen at the maximum resolution with, I think, all the settings set on high. And yeah, let's play a game here. I'm getting around, uh, I don't know, 50-ish FPS. That's not bad for this resolution. 3072 by um, 1920 at the highest settings. So pretty darn impressive. This game, of course, isn't the most graphically demanding ever. As we'll see with Battlefield 5, that will definitely be a challenge. But if you have good internet, which I clearly don't in my basement here, you can definitely run this game at higher settings, you know? I'd say a good mixture of medium and high settings, maybe even at a lower resolution. You could have a very playable 60 FPS experience. If you happen to have this laptop, once again, for whatever reason, obviously you don't buy a MacBook for gaming, but if you happen to have one, you can do some gaming on here, even with the baseline one, as you can see. And of course, I'm going to totally be a dick and not help my friends. I think the stuttering that I'm getting here is because of my internet. Don't worry about that. And I've been killed. So perfect. On to the next game. Sorry if the perspective changed a little bit. I had to put a new battery in my camera. Next up, let's launch Battlefield 1. We'll do Battlefield 5 in a minute here, but Battlefield 1 has a special place in my heart. I played a lot of this during the summer, and it's that game that I either love or hate in the moment. I'm either really good or really bad, so we'll see how I do here. Full screen, and we'll go to the maximum resolution. And I'm gonna keep the graphic settings at medium and just see what happens, because I actually want a playable experience. I kinda know how this is gonna go. And here we are. We have an FPS in the corner. It's barely visible, thank God it is, right? I'm seeing 55, 56 FPS. It feels pretty smooth as well. Um, once again, we're at medium settings at the full resolution, which is pretty impressive. Now, this is a pretty open map, but still, this game is pretty graphically intensive. But yet, so far, it's a pretty playable experience, probably even more so with the higher-end graphics than I just got owned. Um, so yeah, so far, I'm seeing it in the 50s. It's dipping down to the 40s here and there. Let's join a conquest match real quick here. I'm getting in the 50s here, the little FPS indicator glows or is colored yellow when it's in the 50s, green when it's above 60. So 50s for playing in the 50 FPS range is pretty acceptable, I think. I've seen it dip down a couple times into the 40s range, and this is a big map too with a lot of wind happening here. Um, so I would say at medium settings, full resolution, it's totally playable and I just got blown up. And your gameplay experience will be better, especially with a better internet connection. Let's turn it all on high and see what happens. And we are automatically in the 40s here. So at high settings, full resolution Battlefield 1 with this map, we're getting in the 40 FPS range here. Not great for gameplay. Um, obviously, you're going to want more frames if you, uh, you know, are playing this somewhat seriously. I'm going to shoot at this plane like an idiot. And again, sorry for the scene changing here. I had to update Battlefield 5 and it was taking five years. So that was really fun. So let's launch it here. This will be the final game that we'll test video. Okay, so we're going to set it to the maximum resolution. Once again, we're going to have it on medium starting out. And once again, we are at the full resolution, which is 3072 by 1920. So here we are playing at full resolution at high settings, apparently. Let me just double check here. Um, so let's look at the video settings. And yeah, clearly we are on high. And from what I can tell, I'm getting a solid, I don't know, like 30, 35 FPS. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm shooting. Yeah, so we're in the solid 33, 35, upper 30s FPS range, which isn't bad considering the GPU inside here isn't the most impressive ever, but clearly it's impressive enough for this laptop. The processor is also powerful too. 
I'm going to actually lower the graphics settings to medium and see how that goes. And now I think we're in the 40 FPS range. So I'm seeing, I'm sorry, I have to bend in here to see this tiny ass FPS number here. We're in the 40, low 40s, mid 40s FPS range, which is pretty nice. This game looks amazing, even at medium settings. Let's bring it to low settings. So it seems like we've gone up 10 FPS. We're now in the 50s range, sometimes 40s, but mostly 50s. I'm sure if you adjusted the resolution too, to be lower than, um, <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm sure if you adjusted the resolution to be lower, like to 2560 by 1600 or to, I don't know, like 2048 by something still in the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, you'd be able to play at low settings at a solid 60 FPS or possibly even medium settings. But yeah. From my experience playing all these games here, um, this laptop, although it's not ideal for gameplay, you can do it. If you have this laptop for work and you feel like running Windows on it, it is definitely not a horrible experience. Once again, especially on an external SSD if you don't feel like partitioning part of your internal SSD to Windows. I highly recommend looking up tutorials on how to do that. And I may have said this before, I will probably come out with a tutorial on how to install Windows on an external SSD for your Mac in like 2020. Let's see if I can get a kill here. Nope. So now that we're on the Windows desktop, allow me to talk about the Windows 10 experience on this machine. Of course, this runs very smoothly with the correct bootcamp drivers. Graphics are not laggy. There's no artifacting. Everything runs just like it would on a regular Windows laptop. And I'm going to demo one app here that I use all the time now, unfortunately, and that is Access. And I have to use it for my own uh, Windows oriented work for business or my business classes. And although I don't have a database to show you, um, as you can see here, you can do whatever you do with this app. I don't even know here. These apps work very, very well, of course, because the hardware in here is more than good enough to run them. i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and you know the GPU in there works really, really nicely. And for the most part, I've not run into too many issues except for the sound issue like we experienced in this video. For some reason, the audio drivers are kind of wonky. For some reason, they didn't kick in when I booted uh, this device now. And this happened in the past, actually. I actually reinstalled Windows, but we still have the same issue. Although when I initially installed it, it wasn't an issue. Maybe it's because of this adapter. Maybe it's because of some weird thing that I did. Maybe it's because of some program I installed. I don't know, but I think this can be fixed and I will definitely come up with a fix or find a fix by the time I release a tutorial on how to install Windows 10 or run it off of an external SSD with your Mac. And that about wraps things up. That's the corniest shit I've ever done. I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. I got some Surface Laptop 3 content coming up, my MacBook Pro 16-inch full review, and other content on that list. I'm not even going to think of all of it. Uh, and as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.